Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. And in this quick tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the different ways to use occlusion layers in Sapphire's lens flare to automatically create better looking results with no manual keyframes. Occlusion layers are a great way to get more naturalistic looking flares out of Sapphire's lens flare, but it can do more than just block or expose where the flare is being shown. So let's let's see how this project is set up at the moment. Um, I have my titles here, and my titles have an alpha channel. Then on top of that, I have a black layer with a, uh, a lens flare put on top, and my layer is set to screen mode, just to uh, bring those two together. Now I can do this on one layer, but I find that this gives me a little bit more flexibility. So let's set up the occlusion layer and see what the basics of occlusions do. So in the Sapphire Lens Flare effect, we're gonna take occlusion from layer and we're gonna choose the bottom layer here, which is our layer with uh, alpha. Now, if I just drag this over, we can see what happens by default. If I go underneath the titles, my uh, flare is now being blocked. As I come out from behind them, my flare is being shown again. Maybe I'll turn the flare, uh, flare width up a little bit here so we can see this a little bit easier. There we go. And, and as you can see, if I just move it so it's just on the edge, we get a bit of a fall off as things go behind there. So it's not just a simple straightforward on and off. We do have a little bit of a fall off. So let's look at what we can do with occlusions. So if I come down into my occlusion, parameter settings, and I'm gonna reset my scale widths as well so that we can see this a bit easier and I'll zoom in and set us back to full res. So these occlusion parameters are laid out in the way that we want to probably use them. So we have occlusion softness. So if I set this down to zero, and I'll just put it on the edge there, you'll see that it just sits in. We still do get a bit of that fall off that we were seeing before, but let's see what happens when I bring my occlusion, or so when I bring my softness up a little bit. We can see that's now drifting a little bit around. So if I move this from left to right, you can see that instead of just having a straight, a straight edge, it actually wobbles just a little bit as well. And this can be can be great, maybe not uh, not such a high occlusion level, but this can be used to just add a little bit more sort of natural wrap uh, when we're moving something using an occlusion. And we can set up whether we're occluding from the uh, alpha, from the luma, or from none. So we don't even have to have a um, an image with an alpha channel. We can just use regular video footage and use the luma channel to try to set up the occlusion there. You see this works in relatively the same way with the, the luma channel because we do have a sort of black and white area. But you'll notice that in this case, when we're over an area that's not 100% white, it doesn't block the, uh, the flare 100%. And this can be uh, really useful for, for sort of just getting a kind of uh, a soft sort of lighting glow effect. We're gonna build more on that idea in just a little bit, but that's something we can, we can do already here. We can also choose to invert the occlusion. So if I turn my occlusion back to, uh, to alpha here, so we can see this a bit better. Now you can see it's only occluding or actually only showing us the flare when we're over the letters. Otherwise, it goes away again. So again, this is a great way of just sort of building in a nice bit of glow into a, into a piece of text without showing us a flare when it's over the black background. Now, what you'll also have noticed is that when we're over these letters, our flare has changed color. Uh, and that's because of the next um, parameter, which is use color. If we don't want that, if we want to keep the, uh, the flare as it was, we can just turn off the use color and we maintain the original flare. Now, the next controls are some of my favorites when we're dealing with flares over motion graphics, including text here and that is the diffraction glow. Now the diffraction glow gives us the effect of lighting up the surrounding area, 
uh, using the hotspot. So if I turn my diffraction glow up a little bit, I'll turn it up quite a lot so we can see it really easily. Turn it up to point, uh, point 0.27. And if I just move my hotspot around, what you'll see is I'm lighting up not just with the, uh, with the hotspot, but I'm getting a glow that's going around the, uh, the surrounding area too. And this is where things start getting fun because I can change up my glow width and my glow radius. So if I take the glow width down, you can see we're getting a much more contained area of our, of our glow. So we're only seeing this over the A and the R in lens flare. Let's turn that up. And you can see now that's giving us a much more sort of diffuse area, much more diffuse width. So it's sort of blurring that out for us. And then if I take my glow radius, you can see how that's building out the glow that's coming from that width. So a nice little trick here, if I have a uh, quite a high, so a very high diffraction glow, I'm gonna set that to one. And I'll take my other ranges down for a second. Can't set them to zero because that gives us a, a very different look than we want. Zero, a, a, a zero on the, uh, the glow radius starts to glow everything out. We don't really want that. So we want that to sort of stay fairly, fairly low, but not zero. And if you see here, with our glow width set to one and our glow radius set to 15, as we move this around, we're getting just like a really nice metallic looking effect as we move around here. So if I bring the glow width up just a little bit as well, maybe take that to about six and take the glow uh, diffraction glow down. You can start to see how we're getting this really nice look as I trace the hotspot around the edge of the, uh, of the letters here. And only affects the letters when we're over when the hotspot's over them, because of course we've got the occlusion layer doing lots of the work to to sort of block the the uh, hotspot out. But it means that when we do go over them, we get this this gorgeous looking diffraction as we go around the letters. The final thing that I want to show you with the occlusions is uh, occlusion triggers, and these triggers work in the same way as the edge triggers and the center triggers work. So when this goes over something that's occluded, we get a chance to scale the brightness and scale the width. And we can see that maybe if I open up the parameters a little bit more, you can see the entire word there. So it means we get a little bit more movement, or a little bit more life to, uh, to our flare as it hits one of these triggers. And the trigger in this case is the occlusion trigger. Now, this is quite an extreme, or I say quite an extreme, it's a very extreme, example there, I might take, just take that down to 1.25. I might even take my brightness downwards a little bit. And we can just have this now scaling and moving around as it hits the text. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this keyframe because I've already keyframed up our, our hotspot here. And I'm just gonna do a quick RAM preview. And now you can see we're using Sapphire's lens flare in a slightly different way than just having a, uh, a big old lens flare floating across the text. We're actually using it to, to highlight areas of the text and give us that nice uh, metallic look, which I think works really nicely and is really cool. And I know a lot of people who are using Sapphire's Lens Flare on almost a daily basis still haven't really explored some of the things that you can do with occlusion, which is why I wanted to show you this. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about Sapphire's Lens Flare or any of the Sapphire filters, then head on over to BorisFX.com. You can find the latest product news, new tutorials, and you can even download a free trial. My name's Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again soon.